Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our monthly webinar series called the Metaverse Collective for the Anima Collective. I am your host. My name is Shirley Lopez, and I have a wonderful guest speaker today. Um, from actually, she is not from the Anima Collective. I almost said she was, but maybe in the future she could be an Anima Collective member. But I know Melissa through my other networks, which we'll get into right now. Um, Melissa also goes by Rogo. I will be calling her Rogo because I like calling her Rogo. But Melissa Rogosinski um, from RPC Marketing Strategies. And let me tell you all a little bit about the Anima Collective. It is a space where soul development and entrepreneurship meet. It is an inclusive community of self-identifying women with an entrepreneurial spirit. Growing together in our true authentic power, we are powerful leaders in our homes, in our communities. We transform the world into a more just, equitable, joyful, creative, connected, prosperous place. If you are unfamiliar with the Anima Collective, please check out their website at theanimacollective.com. And introducing ourselves, myself, I am Shirley Lopez. I am a member of the Anima Collective since April 2020. I have two established businesses. They're legal services companies, LNL Process and Notary Force. Uh, we are nationwide process servers and we are virtual notaries. And I'm also working on a startup called Metadime. It is a, um, a we are building a loyalty and membership platform for businesses to use and, and we're using Web3 technology for that. But more importantly, I want to get into our guest speaker, Rogo, Melissa Rogozinski from RPC Strategies. Tell us about you. I am so happy that you're here because um, Rogo comes from the uh, my other world, my legal size side world, where um, I'm just networking with a bunch of attorneys and legal professionals. So um, thank you, Melissa, for being here and, and take it away. Tell us about yourself. Uh, thanks, uh, Shirley, for that introduction and for having me here. And I'm looking at all of your businesses and I'm like, that's that's my brain. Like, that's our brain as an entrepreneur and in being a woman. You know, it's we have our own. I'm not that bandwagon wagon kind of woman. I don't beat my chest, but we do have certain challenges. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so my personality. This is so my path. And it always has been because I've done the same thing. I, I've created multiple companies and I've got you know, new ideas now. So I'm tickled to see that. Um, it inspires me. Um, so my name is Melissa Rogozinski. Yes, everybody calls me Rogo because I actually grew up in Alabama and Rogozinski is not very Southern. <laughs> so <laughs> pronounce it. And I was 14 years old and my English teacher in high school just started calling me Rogo one day in class and it stuck. And so that has been the name that everybody calls me very few actually call me by my first name. And every now and then when I hear it, especially from someone in legal, I have to double check because I and mm -hmm. remember that they're actually talking to me. Um, so I've been in law for 28 years. I was a litigation paralegal for 11 years. And then um, I have two degrees and I've gone back to school. And so uh, when I finished my undergrad, I went into sales for a legal technology company. And that was back in 05, 06, when the federal and state rules were changing to address technology and its implications on law in our cases. Um, and so I was kind of in that pioneering group and I didn't realize it then, but I know it now. And that's really what catapulted my career was technology. And I saw a gap for education and I created a group that did our own education in Birmingham, Alabama. And then that in a couple of years turned into a business. I had some personal challenges. I had a parent with um, terminal health issues. So I had to pivot. And um, that's how I became an entrepreneur. Um, and then just one thing led to another over the last 11 years. And it's led to being asked by vendors and law firms for help with marketing. And so I created RPC Strategies in 2019. And so we do, it's not just marketing. We really try to coin it as growth strategies, like a chief growth officer. We're a fractional chief growth department because we align marketing and sales enablement the way that it's supposed to be to maximize um, the brand, the messaging, and really targeting the right client um, buyers and um, being more effective with um, our efforts and ultimately revenue generation. So 
Awesome. Wow. What a, what a resume and a fellow entrepreneur. I love it. And a woman. Yay. <laughs> so awesome. I love it. I love the energy. And, um, you know, now that you've introduced yourself, um, we can get into some nitty gritty about marketing for businesses and using AI. And, and I just want to hear everything, you know, because, um, whenever, you know, we're talking and we're talking legal stuff, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the tech gets involved and it's just mind blowing sometimes how you can really just change the way you do business, the way we market, the way we see ourselves, everything, our content. Um, and so I'm, I'm always fascinated. So, so where are we going to start off today? All right. What are we so talking about? it's a, to set the stage, this is now, of course, you and I are also in legals, but what I'm going to talk about is really a framework that applies to any business. Um, and just like technology changing the laws back in 05 and 06, it really turned the legal industry on its head. You know, people don't really, especially outside of legal and inside legal, I've seen it too, don't really pay attention to what they're posting or what they're publishing. Um, and they get themselves in a lot of trouble. Um, and that's how the law, the legal side of, you know, technology and the laws evolved. And that turned the legal industry up on its head. Now we've adjusted and we've adapted and it's mainstream now. Um, and now AI is doing the same thing. AI is much bigger. Um, it's much more impactful. And, you know, we've got several programs that we're doing that are going to be talking about. I've been watching the news Ever since ChatGPT came out and they opened it, OpenAI opened it up, I really was hesitant to get on board. And I had clients asking me very early on how we're using it and if we're using it. Um, and I really was a little bit resistant. This is one thing that did give me pause. And I feel pretty advanced um, in my knowledge about technology and what I do, how I apply it. And this, I, this gave me pause. And um, so I just really watched and I read a lot of the articles. There were so many articles going out on all the media sources and LinkedIn and um, it's, and it's still, I mean, it's all of the different issues um, and benefits and um, limitations. It's, it's been an overwhelming amount of information about AI and generative AI. So I've taken my time to kind of watch that, read, see what the topics are, what the trends are, learning from other people. Um, and I, back in February, I did start testing it out myself, uh, both through um, OpenAI, which has ChatGPT, and then BARD as well. And so that's kind of, I'm at a point now in August, so that's six months I've been studying this and reading articles and listening and um, <sighs> really figuring out what's the best way to use it. And what I've come to is what is being promoted is that it is a tool and it's actually a really great tool. I was a little bit irritated with it at first because I thought I have one of those jobs that it there's several people that it could have a negative impact on our careers and my business, you know, so, but I have learned what it is. It's a tool and it's a really fantastic tool and I'm excited about it and I am using it more and more but I tested it out on myself first in my own company before I decided to start using it for some things. I will use it like my other marketing executive colleagues use it um, to draft something or to ghostwrite or to summarize or to give me ideas. Everything that I do in it never goes out exactly like it gave it to me because at the end of the day, it's artificial intelligence, not emotional intelligence. And it still needs a human touch on it. So three things, it's artificial intelligence, not emotional intelligence. It still needs a human touch because it needs your voice and you know your audience better. It's never gonna know your audience the way that you do. It's never gonna have the personal experiences that you've had both personally and professionally that you can infuse in you know, the things that you're putting out there. And the most important thing, if you're creating any kind of content with AI, any kind of content, images, it doesn't matter, anything it create, if you're using AI to create it for you, you do not have copyright. Um, that is one of the big set of cases that have been coming out. Uh, one of my colleagues is going to, I've seen several articles and I brought this up to a colleague and he's actually going to be writing another article on that and he's going to tag me about it. But 
that was really important because we had a client that challenged us on what we do. And, you know, so we had to have a conversation about that, but that at the end of the day, anything you're using it to create, you do not maintain copyright. The courts have said, and the law says that in order to have copyright over any creation, um, you it has to be created by a human being. You can't just go use AI to create it and then go edit it and call it your own. Neither AI nor the person creating it or editing it can main copyright. Copyright doesn't exist in that situation, which is actually something that I think is going to help Hollywood out a lot. Um, right. Yeah. So anyway, um, that uh, is certain something I'll capitalize on with my, mm -hmm. but you know, it took time. And, and so I'm at first when I was so resistant, I was kind of questioning if I'm stepping on my own toes and if I was hurting myself by not jumping on board, but I've always been that way. I always, I, I never jump on board to trends and I take my time and I really listen just because I'm in law and I've been in it for so long. And I know that things will surface if I give myself time. And so patience totally paid off this time. So I know what its limitations are, but I also know now how I can use it to help me and my business and my clients. Um, so let me stop there. And it was kind of a good, heavy prologue. Let me, are there any questions before I jump in and start doing some screen sharing and show you some examples of how I've been using it? Marsha, go ahead. I actually love that I decided to join this call because uh, I'm also very hesitant when it comes to trendy things. Mm -hmm. And I sort of stepped into the AI world because I had a crooked, uh, it's a crooked um, general contractor who um, was going to redesign my, well, redesign my pool. I had done a design work that I wanted them to do. And I didn't do my due diligence to check on the licensing regarding pools. It turns out that they were only licensed for decks. When I found this out, I already had a creator in my backyard and I said, okay, the smartest thing to do is I'm going to have to let them finish up to the point where I'm going to have water in it, or I'm going to end up with a creator in my backyard for a very long time. Cause I know how these legal matters can turn into, uh, I ended up firing that company and, and I was, I had to hire a contract attorney to help me they were unwilling to budge and they placed a lien for the balance, even though they weren't licensed for the pool. And I had to pay an attorney a lot of money. And when I realized wow. that the attorney's assistant was just asking me for all the information, everything, they weren't really having a conversation with me as to, you know, I gave them everything, everything. They're not licensed. This is the license number. These are the permits. I gave the attorney everything. I didn't feel comfortable that they were going to defend me properly. And when it went to mediation, I went on chat GPT and I studied everything that a pool contractor in Florida needs to know, everything that a contractor would have had to do, the steps they would have had to take. And I defended myself in mediation and I won. I didn't win any money because they weren't willing to pay me, but I didn't have to pay them the balance of that job. Um, unfortunately, because of the legal system, I would have needed a lot more money to go after them, you know, in a different scale. But but that was my first experience with AI. And I was like, you know, it could really be helpful sometimes when you don't have the knowledge or the background or or the know-how. It, it was able yeah. to, it was able to give me enough information that I was able to to talk like I knew what I was saying. No, you know, and it's that's all about experimenting too. Yeah. And that's another point to bring up about AI too, is that it's not a subject matter expert, but it can help in situations like what you just described that it can give you, no, I mean, we know it's just regurgitating information that it's already ingested and there is a limit when it, that information stopped. Right. And so it's not, you know, it doesn't have new information there is going to be a time when it starts um, regurgitating its own output. Um, and I saw somebody post on, I posted something about that on LinkedIn and somebody replied, sounds like inbreeding. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's, there's so much that we can unpack here, but I think those are very smart use um, of AI because it gave you what you needed to at least go to your lawyer and your mediation and say, look, here's the research I've done. And it's an intelligent set of data um, that is 
it's it's like when Google came out, you know, and we we're able to search the internet for all these things. Like it's a it's a great tool, it's a powerful tool. And I have to admit, I never thought I'd see the day when something came out that was more powerful than Google and we're here. Um, right. And so it's, I think it's a great use of the tool to have done that, Marsha, uh, because it gave you what you needed to go to your lawyer, go to mediation and at least question and, you know, defend yourself and have that information. So, um, and I think a lot of people don't realize also that um, specifically JetGPT can be used not only for creating content, but for creating internal processes or just like what you did, just ask a question. I want to know, tell me everything about this one subject, you know, and it, you know, you used it for reasons to defend yourself. Like that's not something that you would, we would always think about, oh, I should just chat GPT that, <laughs> you know? So I don't many. even know how I came up with that. I, I think someone might have said it or I must have thought, let me ask ChatGPT. And, you know, it, it gave me the data from when it pulled that data. But it was enough that I knew that I was going to get myself through the mediation. Um, I most recently used it for um, I'm, I, I was a director of local sales for Cisco for 13 years and I resigned in February and I've been building my own my own business, so to speak, trying to figure out what avenue I want yeah. to go, which is many. But um, I could use you, Rogo, for um, legal matters because I created, I'm, I'm going to be representing products from other countries, from, from Colombia, from Chile. They are vendors that are already here local in the US, but they want to use me for representation. And I was using AI to kind of build my agreement, my vendor agreement, so that I'm protected. But in the end, I'm I'm gonna want an attorney that's going to take a look at that and and say, okay, well, you might need an additional clause, you might need this, you might need that. And I can incorporate whatever legal fee yeah. for documents are I'll have the client pay for that attorney so that I have you know some sort of legal backup with with what I'm doing I I totally agree with that use it to help create something but always take it when it comes to anything dealing with legal issues always 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 take it to a lawyer get a lawyer involved 100 percent yeah 100 percent um yeah and and I'm not a lawyer myself. I mean, I, I know enough and people and friends and even some lawyers are like, I would put you toe to toe with any lawyer I know. But, um, you know, it's even even when I know I know something, I still because I'm not a lawyer, I will pick up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know who could help you, Marsha? Lauren Marsicano. Um, she actually she was my last guest on the Anima Collective last last month. Um, and she was also a guest on our Miami Dade Bar Association webinar too. Um, she she ha she does contracts all the time, okay. all the time. And she's an Anima Collective member. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Laura Marcicano, I could definitely introduce you to her. Great. Yeah, send me an introduction to her too, because I actually have a neighbor who um, has already asked me for a, a business attorney recommendation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Gotcha. All right, so let me do a screen share, and I'm gonna um, kind of jump in. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce back and forth a little bit and show yeah. you what I've created and explain kind of um, the how and why of it. So let me. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Okay, so the first screen. Now I'm not looking directly at the camera. I'm on the screen because I have my what my ops guy calls mm -hmm. my station set up here yeah no worries we see the introducing chat GPT. all right so i only have this window up because i mean now we know what this is. so i've i'm already logged in so i'm just going to open up the different windows that i'm sharing so mm -hmm. this is an, i went ahead and upgraded to chat gpt4 i was only on 3 3.5 the free version um and then eventually and i used it a few times but then i eventually talked to some of my um marketing executive colleagues and how they're using it and i went ahead and upgraded it and then the number one reason I upgraded was because right here, I can give it custom instructions. So Ooh. these custom instructions live here all the time. So the first thing is, who am I? So I told, you asked for my bio, there you go. <laughs> this is my bio. Um, and so I put and, this- and, and so it's looking for your voice when you're doing that. Is that what, what yeah. that purpose is? 
I, yes, I think so. And this is very freestyle. So it's just a question and it's freestyle. It's not telling you, it's not giving you guidance on what to say. So um, this, okay. I, I'm using it because when I write things, I want the voice to come from me, but also I'm a subject matter expert. Okay. And then how do you want Jack GPT to respond? So at first I just put in, again, it's just a free space. I just put in blog articles. I haven't used, I haven't created custom instructions for any other kind of collateral that I create only this, cause it's kind of the meat of what we do, but blog articles. And this is all based on like buyer personas and strategies and all these things that we implement um, and how I know to write for a website ver versus getting published in media, whatever. So I gave it a list of, you know, who's the audience, what kind of voice do I want to use? What's the total word count of any article you write for me? Um, and then very specifically, I want an introduction paragraph that has 150 to 200 words. The body, I want to have three to five bullet points identifying a problem and a solution with one to two paragraphs each. Um, the closing, you know, a summary and remove redundancies because when I first started using it, um, I, I used it to write an article um, that I'll show you a little bit um, when, on our fourth anniversary back in April and about having a seat at the table. And I was struggling with having time to write and really think through because it, it was really going to be kind of an intense piece. And then that's, I was traveling to a conference and I just thought, you know what, let me try chat GPT with this. And I felt guilty about it, but I just, I basically put in the topic and asked who, what, when, where, and why questions and how. And so, and it spit out this beautiful article for me, but there were a lot of redundancies between all of the questions. I had all five questions. There were, it was repeating itself, which was initially, you know, a problem, a limitation that we found with um, AI, these, you know, LLM models that um, it repeats itself. Um, there's hallucinations. You have to do fact checking. You can't rely on it. You know, what do you mean there's hallucinations? It makes up stuff. It completely fabricates things. Oh, okay. We fabricate thing. Um, and it, um, we'll talk about court cases later, but there's a defamation court case out against right now. So, um, but what you'll see here is that even in my custom instructions, I've given a lot of detail. So you can't see that the question of how this, or write an article about that. Like you have to give it a lot of detailed instructions up front first. So that's just my custom instructions. Now, the next thing I did, um, let's see, what's the first thing I wanna show you? Um, okay, is an article we will do, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna show you this. So this article right here where the graphic says, navigating the legal tech space as an investor in marketing and sales perspective. Uh -huh. That's the title that was used when it was published in one of the legal media publications. And the reason I'm showing you this is because this is one of the graphics that we actually didn't update, but on my website, so it gets published in a media publication. And then a couple of days later, I have to give them, you know, first right, let them market it. And then a couple of days later, I can post it on my own website and do my own marketing with it, social and email. And so we gave it a different title, three marketing and sales considerations for investors. Um, and so I'll go ahead and open this up and I always have a little video with it. Here's my title. Here's all of the content, right? And so I got ready to post it on LinkedIn this morning. And so I went to ChatGPT and asked it to, um, do two things for me. And you'll see, again, I gave it very specific, um, custom instructions, all right, suggest five blog titles for this article using a compass or a synonym for navigating in the title. And the reason I did that was because of that graphic, right? So the mm -hmm. graphic had the compass on it. I'll go back. Yeah. Had yeah. the compass on it, but it had a title in there that was used for the media publication. Then I had a different title for my website. So I wanted a different title to post it to LinkedIn, all right, for SEO purposes. Um, same content, different title. So I have a 
one of that graphic. We have multiple versions of that graphic. I have one that doesn't have a title on it, but it just has the compass and my company's logo. So I can use that on LinkedIn. So I said, give me five blog titles for this article using a compass or a synonym for navigating in the title. And then I copied and pasted the whole thing here. You can see here, here's all the content. And then it gave me these five titles right here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, but you'll see. How did you put the content? In? Uh, so you, you gave it the quick description on top and where did you submit the rest of the content? I, if you oh, hit, okay. I, yeah. I got yeah. It. So it's the same, you copy pasted the actual article. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so I, it's reading the article and then giving you suggestions of five new titles based on my instructions. Very cool. Um, and so even here, if you read all five articles or all five titles, um, I didn't use any of them exactly the way that it gave it to me. I read through and I picked pieces that I liked best and created my own titles. So then I asked it another question. Okay, which is a which title is better for this article? A, an investor's guide to legal tech marketing and sales strategies, or B, an investor's guide to legal tech growth strategies? Mm -hmm. um, because I really like similar. <laughs> I liked this right here. Your guide. I I liked the word guide for the the synonym I was looking for. Mm. Um, and then if you think of like um, lead gen downloadables, you know, it's the beginner's guide to this, or it's, you know, the expert's guide to that, right? Um, and so I liked the word guide and I want them to think of me as a guide. So then I created, I took pieces from that and I was like, okay, great. You've given me great ideas. Which one's the better title? Both titles have merits, but there's subtly, they subtly target different areas of focus. And so it explained to me, which was a little bit more than I was even asking, which was great, but it, it said, okay, here's this title and here's what it targets. Here's this title. Then it said, given that your article, it tells me, okay, here's the two, here's what they target. Based on this assessment, here is my rec here's ChatGPT's recommendation for the best possible title for this article. Okay, so, uh, then I asked, okay, great. Write a 250 word copy for a LinkedIn company page post uh, for this article, all right? And give it a C this two CTAs of my Calendly and uh, my company's email address, right? So again, it wrote all of this right here. It gave me my hashtags. <laughs> so I took that and I went- and this But you, you tweak it, right? I mean, you, I you tweak everything. Okay. I don't- anything out exactly the way it came to me. Um, so here is the article, an investor's guide to legal tech marketing and sales strategies, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually took some stuff out because there was a reference to uh, the investment amount from 2021 and it's gone way, way down since then. So, and we're in 23 now. So I took that sentence out, um, posted it here, put my little video in, um, I was able to add links to a brochure um, and scheduling here. Um, and then, so that's the article on my company's LinkedIn page with the new title. And then you'll see here is the LinkedIn copy, the post copy. Oh, I love um, it. And yeah. I, like, this line right here, I added and I tagged Mike Bryant. There's a, there's a few things that I um, tweaked from it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really good at creating LinkedIn copy for my personal profile, but when it comes to a company page, it's a different pitch and I'm not great at that. So I have found that ChatGPT can help me when I am when I need copy for my company page or if I need copy for a client's company page. So, and I typically have content writers that can do that, you know, but if somebody's not available or they didn't get it and we have project management, you know, if anything happens and it, I just need it and I don't need to be screwing around. I have really found it yeah. a very helpful tool for me. This is fantastic. I love this. Um, um, so that's content creation. Um, 
have you I got one for you that you'll tell me question. I, I got one for you so I, I was just trying to you know come up with something clever but you know go tell me <laughs> you're gonna love this give me 10 alternative alternative titles for um this interview um and then give me 10 new titles this was for a video interview that I did with Stephanie Wilkins editor-in-chief of legal tech news um, and again, like I took it, I may, I actually made it give me, um, 20 cause I didn't like the first 10 it gave me. And then that's how I came up with a, um, it, there's something here, the AI tech revolution. Um, it, it kept talking about revolution and I ended up calling the video, um, the evolution of a revolution. Okay. <laughs> tech or something. Yeah. So it was a really cool title. Um, and then for the webinar we're doing next month with the MDBA, that's where I got the title from. I had to use ChatGPT to create it for me. Love um, it. And let's see. Here we go. Right there. Yeah. Give me 10 new titles for a webinar about what AI is and how it is used in the practice of law. The audience is lawyers and law firms, and the speakers are industry experts in law practice and media. And that's how I came up with the title for our webinar that we're doing in September. And you'll see here, like it isn't, none of these are exactly what we called it. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I used it that way. Uh, let's see. Let me show you one more thing. So we're creating a podcast um, from some of the video interviews that I'm doing, which I've got one right after this too. Okay. Um, and I did a little bit of podcasting back in 2016, but it's been a long, long time and things advanced. And I just either didn't know how or what I've realized is that I don't have to I can use this to do the research for me um, and it's a whole lot faster um, as long as I know I don't maintain copyright if I choose to use this right um, even when I edit it so I asked at first what's the best way to write a podcast channel description and what should it contain I didn't even know where to start so I asked a very general question so it gives me all of this information Bullet point one, bullet, and I love bullet points. That's how I write content. So for me, it I feel like it's kind of, I don't know if it's learning me or what. Um, so it gives me all of these, you know, great ideas. And I was like, okay, evaluate. So I write it out, evaluate this description um, for compliance with your recommendations above and rate it from one to five with five being the best. If your rating is less than five, make recommendations on how to edit the description in order to attain a rating of five. So again, I'm at, like, I started with a general question, but as I'm digging in, you have to give it a lot of detail. You have to, this is what they're calling prompt engineering. You yeah. There's, there's a whole new profession mm -hmm. about being a prompt engineer. Right. Um, and so I, this was my copy. This is all the things right here. What I typed out, and it gave me a rating of three and a half out of five. So it, and then it gave me all the criteria. It gave me a lot of detail back in return. Here's why you got a three and a half out of five. In order to get a five rating, here's what you need to fix, right? And then Amazing. it gave me a recommendation on revised description. All right, so I go with that. And I'm like, all right, so please evaluate this edited podcast channel description and rate it on a scale of one to five. So I, again, here it is. And it's like, okay, you're up to a four and a half out of five, right? And then it said minor recommendation. And because I didn't realize when I copied the LinkedIn page, it only went to LinkedIn.com. It didn't copy my company page. So I'm gonna, uh, yeah, here's the revised description. And voila, there's my new podcast. We haven't published it yet because we're working on about four or five um, pot audios right now. Uh -huh. So it gave me, it gave me all of this. So I put it in there, right? um for the description now here's the best part of that when i'm doing a video interview um i have a certain um introduction that i've always been doing whether i did it on my own or i've done it for some of the interviews mm -hmm. and that's already in there and so what my ops guy asked me to do was go record an, a new introduction because we've also i used to call it the rising phoenix interview series and so we're giving it a new name and all that. So once I had the description, I was able to go to Zoom and record without video 
And I just read this to the Zoom for the audio recording. So now my ops guy can go take that audio, um, you know, clean it up and then splice it onto the podcast. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. It, wow. I've really, my resistance has turned into, um, what would I call it? Uh, educated caution. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I'm using it now and all right so the title you know alternative title the crazy it's uh, talk about empowerment with a tool yeah. you know a new tool that you thought could destroy you but look at that Here's I want to I want to say that um if you use this tool the way that you're using it to help and to assist others in their business and you're doing it for good then this is this is the benefit because right now with everything happening on our planet, we will need, I say we, because I, I know that, that both of you are in, in that same, you know, who am I going to help? How am I going to get enough people to, to assist in this world? And, and AI is very helpful in that sense. And this is a fun thing. When I had my uh, birthday weekend a couple of weekends ago, I turned 50 a couple of weeks ago. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, my, my best girlfriends from Alabama came down and Friday night, we decided we were going to do a cocktail making class. Um, one of the girls um, and her children, they grown children, they make cocktails. So she had this idea for one that um, they had made for uh, a friend's wedding, but it had a what like a love wedding name. And I was like, okay, that's, we don't want that name right for this cocktail. So we're like, what can we call it? What we call it? I was like, Ooh, let me go ask chat GPT. So I was like, Hey, give me 10 creative names for a cocktail made with these ingredients. And so we give the ingredients and it gives us these names. And again, we didn't take anything as it gave us, but what we ended up settling on was we really liked the idea of twilight and lavender. So we called the new cocktail lavender twilight. Love it. Look at that. You see? <laughs> yeah. How oh, awesome. Like it just, it accelerates so many things. It accelerates your mm -hmm. thinking, it accelerates your, uh, your productivity. It accelerates getting stuff done. You know, just, you know, you've been wanting to launch this new business. They had asked chat TBT. Like that's yeah. a starting point, you know, and it's just amazing. I love it. I love the, I, I love everything that's coming out of it. Uh, have you experimented with anything with images yet? No, um, I'm, I'm leaving that to my creative guys. They they both have 30 years experience in graphics and design and creative. So I'm, I'm not rocking that boat. Um, and my guys create beautiful things. So if I ever need something just for me personally, maybe, but um, I don't see me doing that. Um, I was going to show you a couple articles I'm working on too, that uh, usually the stuff I write or that my writers ghost write with me, those are the things that get published. But um, I've got a couple things right now that um, I did use ChatGPT's help with. Okay. Um, I gave it a lot of very specific, you know, information on what I was looking for. And, and it spit out, it, it, once I, you know, it had all my, you know, background information, and then I told it specifically, here's what I want. I'll cover these four things. And I want to know these three or five things about each one of them. Um, and, and it spit out, it spit out that article in like three seconds. And at first I was irritated. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Um, and then I was like, okay again, just like the anniversary article, I was like, I needed the help for my own stuff right now. And it, and so I went through it and I did, I, but I did heavy editing, you know, so I do, I don't take it at face value. I did heavy right. editing. Um, right. and then I have a couple of co-authors. They also read through it, contributed, um, you know, and we're doing an interview on it right after this. Um, and so I also, so one's on marketing basics and then the next one is on sales enablement basics. I use chat GPT for both of them. The one on sales enablement, even though I gave it the kind of detail that I am talking about, I'm not really happy. And I made it write it twice. I'm not happy with what it produced. So I'm going to do a lot of heavy editing on that one. Um, and, you know, so it's it's a really good tool, but you have to have your own hands on it. You have to have your own touch on it. Um, and it's not 100%. And it's, you know, like the sales article, it really didn't get it twice. Yeah. You know, in the yeah. early days before I upgraded, 
I also ran my website through it. And I said, create an SEO strategy for my website. And I used ChatGPT3 and Bard. And I did it twice on both. All four times, the SEO strategy that came back to me was an SEO strategy for a spa. Because a former tagline for RPC strategies was rise, renew, regenerate after the idea. Oh. Of, right. And so it took that as a spa. But if anybody goes to my website, like it's you grab the logo from my website. And the reason I know you got it from the website is because it says law firm and legal tech marketing under my logo that you used. Yeah. That's the only place they that have it like that. Yes. <laughs> and you go, if you look at any page on my website, it's clear what I do and who my audience is. You know, the 50 or so blog articles we have there, the videos, you know, the brochures that say law firm marketing, legal tech marketing, you know, it's it's clear. And so both times, ChatGPT and Bard completely failed writing an SEO strategy for my website. Um, it doesn't make sense why it would have done that, you know, so... Um, you know, and I think the only other thing I would touch on too is, um, let me stop there before we move on because we both have a hard stop. Um, but I want to address kind of the, I can tell you that I wrote, um, a whole webinar using chat GPT. Um, but I tweaked it so much, but it was a starting point. I asked it to give me, I was like, this is the audience. This mm-hmm. is how long it is. This is how many slides I have. These are, you know, basic topics. And then I and then I actually tweaked it from there. It gave me a good foundation. And then I knew how the flow was going to go and even what my call to action was. It was great. I mean, I and I and I also used AI to create the images mm-hmm. in um in in the in the webinar slides. <laughs> How do you create the images? I've never done that, actually. I created the images using, oh my goodness. Um, I don't remember what the website was because it was something I just stumbled on. Um, it wasn't mid journey. Um, and it was actually, it was an actually, it was a PowerPoint AI. Okay. It was a PowerPoint AI. So, um, man, I don't remember the name of it, but in within that PowerPoint AI, it had the ability to create AI images. Okay. So that's where I created the images, and then I would just take the images and put them in my own PowerPoint. <laughs> you know, but it was one of those AI tools, and it was simply tell it what presentation you want, and it will literally create the entire PowerPoint for you. I was like, so, um, but it was kind of cool because it was it's been hard for me to find images. I'm trying to find images of, of people on, I do virtual notarization. So that's what the, the webinar was on. And I was specifically telling it, someone with a headset in a home office, in, you know, in front of their computer, like very, very, very specific. Um, so it was really cool. It was very cool. Very I put a few things in the chat for y'all too. There's a website called, there's an AI for that. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I have that bookmarked. There's yeah. an AI for that. Yeah. Um, and I also put in the chat the um, four court cases we're going to be talking about. Um, brief writing, you know, that lawyer that wrote a brief and cited six cases. And man, that just rippled waves throughout the legal community globally, globally. So they got in so much trouble for that. Um, there's a defamation case, data privacy case, copyright infringement. Um, and now there's several cases out that have determined um, that neither AI nor the person who used it to create content can claim copyright on anything that they used AI to generate. So like the articles I'm writing on marketing basics and sales enablement, I the marketing basics, I definitely can't claim copyright on there. And I also won't be submitting that to the pub, media publications, right? Um, but the one on sales enablement, I'm gonna take a look at it. I, I had it write it twice. I'm not happy with it. It's not it just was very vanilla and it didn't. Let, let me ask you, if you're still tweaking something that came from chat GPT, um, you, you still, just because you used, you started it with chat GPT, you would not submit it to media publications? No, because in my agreement, I have to go back and read them, but um, oh. there's a copyright issue. No one may, no one has copyright to it. 
Gotcha. 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 Copyright to it. So I can't assign copyright. I don't own copyright, so I can't assign copyright. But like well, that's this, good to know for other other point. people that are doing the same thing. That's really good to know. But the sales enablement one, I'm probably going to rewrite that completely. So that'll be mine. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, so that's, I'm still learning, but, you know, it's, um, I'm finding ways to use it to enhance what I do. And like this webinar, I, the Fireflies is my recorder. So it records the audio and it records a rough draft transcript. I'm going to take the rough draft transcript and dump it into chat GBT and ask it to write a, an article summarizing our program today. Oh, what fantastic. Is fireflies? What is Do Fireflies? Um, it's, it's another AI that just, I have it, it comes to all my meetings that I'm assigned to and it records it and we can take it out of a zoom meeting. And sometimes I do, but like, I do it for things like this. I do it for prospecting meetings, for discovery meetings, client meetings, weekly check-ins. There's always a recording there. Um, I've used it a couple of times when, um, a consultant is leaving and I have a debrief or clients leaving and I have a debrief with the client. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's always there as a backup mostly for good purposes. But if anybody, you know, pushes back and, you know, says something didn't happen, I've got a backup. So, and, yeah, <laughs> they have a free version, but I'm using a paid version that gives me a lot of minutes. Um, I use Google Suites uh, for my businesses. And so we use Google Meet um, instead of Zoom. And in Google Meet, you can record and you can transcribe your um, so I'm I'm assuming that's very similar to, you know, Fireflies. So if if anybody's using Google Suite, they can use um, that those same tools. I used to use it at um, Cisco, Microsoft Teams, and I would record the the meeting through Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft Teams also has that capability. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I'm gonna have to jump here in a minute. I need a couple minutes to prepare for my next um, interview because I'm actually hosting it. But, <laughs> no worries. The, you know, I think. The final thing that I would say to kind of wrap up is that, yes, it's a tool um, and you really have to work at that prompt engineering and studying it and really figure it out. It's helpful, but um, when it comes to content that's being created for and by subject matter experts, AI is not that tool. Uh, it really can't do the job. It can't produce it well. It definitely does not have emotional intelligence. It definitely does not have any access to real world experiences or, you know, um, business experiences. And there was one other thing I was thinking of. Um, the emotional intelligence, the real world experiences. There was something that happened earlier this week that, oh, I know what it was. Everything we're talking about like everything that I've learned for the last six months. And I was having a team meeting with my own team on Monday. And, you know, there's all of these things that I've learned that I've studied, the people I've talked to, what they've told me about how they use it, taught me prompt engineering, like everything's in my head. ChatGPT can't write an article or produce any kind of content about what I have been studying and learning and experiencing for the last six months, because it's all right here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, so when it comes to content that is, you know, specific to a target market, specific to subject matter expertise, chat GPT is not that tool for that. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. So thank you so much, Rogo. This is amazing. I know you have to run. Um, I just wanted to put your contact information up just in case anybody wants to contact you. Scan the QR code for Rogo's LinkedIn. Um, you can scan the bottom QR code for my LinkedIn and we can connect. And um, Marsha, do you want to actually say a couple words before we go? Do you want to say anything? No, this was extremely helpful. I greatly appreciate it. I have both of your QRs, so we'll definitely be in touch. Um, Laura Marsicano, you told me would be yes. the like Laura, the Lauren, Lauren Marsicano. Okay. Yeah. Lauren Marsicano. And she is an um Anima Collective member. So you can find her in the Anima Collective as well. Um 
but I'll, I'll see how I can actually give me your email real quick. Sure. It's broker mommy, B R O K E R M O M M Y 1111 at gmail.com. Okay. I'll do that intro. Awesome. 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 Marsha, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Rose. This is amazing. Um, and we're off. Have a great rest of your day. All Have right. Later. Nice to meet you.